find the internal loads in the middle of the beam. First thing I'm going to do is draw a free body diagram of my entire structure. So I have 80 pounds going down, 10 feet of my beam, and the wall. A wall, of course, has AX, AY, and some sort of moment at the wall. Two, solve my equilibrium equations to find out what those reactions are. If I take the sum of the forces in X, I get AX equals zero. Sum of the forces in Y says AY is equal to 80. And the sum of the moments at, oh, say the wall, gives me 80 pounds at 10 feet equals MA. So MA is equal to 800 foot pounds. Now, next thing I want to do, I'm asked to find out what's going on in the middle of the beam. So I want to draw some sort of spot where I've got the middle of the beam as an external surface. I want to know what's happening here in the middle. So I want to free that up so that I can actually identify it. AX is equal to zero. This, these are my external loads. I want to include my external loads on my free body diagram. Now I want to know what's happening in that right hand side. Now remember, if you're going to take this beam apart, you could theoretically put it back together again. So if you were to take it apart, I've got to have equal and opposite loads on both sides of this break. I absolutely must, because I could want to put it back together again, and then those loads would need to cancel so that you didn't have extra applied loads in the middle of your beam. I also need to pay attention to the sign conventions. I don't actually want to have to say M is this moment counterclockwise, given that I've made this particular assumption about which side I'm talking about. I want it to be the same on both sides. So I'm going to use the sign conventions that have been adopted. V goes down, N comes out, and M on that side of my beam is counterclockwise. So if I drew both sides, I would have V down on this side, V up on that side. If I reattached my beam, both of those would cancel out, and I wouldn't have a load. Same thing with my N's and my M's. Those are the sign conventions we've adopted so that when we get an answer at the bottom, all we have to say is what the numbers are. Remember that you've got to have all three of these internal loads. If you ask yourself, how, what, what kind of support is one beam? Think about fixing the left-hand side of the beam and drawing the free body diagram of the right-hand side. So if you cover up the left-hand side, what is the left-hand side is my support for such a question. I want to remove the support and draw a free body diagram of my right hand piece. Well, the support is prevented from, the support prevents the free body diagram from moving up and down. If it's prevented from moving up and down, then there has to be a vertical force. This is our shear load V. Similarly, the support on the left hand piece keeps the right hand piece from sliding right and left. So you know that there has to be a axial load. Same thing with a moment. It can't pivot. That gives us your moment. So a single beam, the middle of it acts as a fixed support. We have to have all three of these internal loads. Once you've put all these three internal loads up here back at step number three, step four just says solve for them. Solve your equilibrium equations. The sum of the forces in x, well, ax was equal to zero, so n is equal to zero. The sum of the forces in y gives you ay is 80 pounds up, 80 pounds minus v equals zero, so v is 80 pounds. I don't have to say up or down, v is just 80 pounds. And if I take the sum of the moments at the break to eliminate what V and N would be, I'd get 80 pounds. This is 5 feet. 80 pounds times 5 feet, spinning counterclockwise. 800 foot-pounds, spinning clockwise and counterclockwise, respectively. And M is spinning counterclockwise as well. So M is 400 foot-pounds. And those are your actual answers. N equals 0 pounds. M is 400 foot-pounds, and V is 80 pounds. You do not need to tell me what side that's on, because even if you looked at it from the other side, you would get the same answer. It's a worthwhile thing to check. If you looked at the piece of the beam from the right-hand side, where you had the 80-pound P load and a 5-foot distance, now V is up. Does that make sense? Yes, V has to be 80 pounds. N is out. No, N has got to be 0, and M would have to be 80 times 5 in the opposite direction. So M has got to be minus, four, minus 800, mm, <clears throat> M has to be minus 400 foot-pounds on both sides. 
It does not matter which side of this beam you take your piece from. And in fact, if you start on this side, on the right hand side, you can sometimes even skip steps one and two, since you don't really need to know what's happening at the wall. The best way though is to check from both sides so that you're sure that you got the right answer.